Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Under the Sea project. Ah. Um, this theme for this box is Waves of Change and it was inspired by a quote I came across. Are you ready? I am ready. It says, sometimes in the waves of change we find our true direction. And I read that during a time where there was just a lot of changes and um, it gave me comfort to know that sometimes being pushed or being prodded or being pulled to do something that we don't want to do or what we first view as a horrible situation or just like not a good time can lead us on a path that is more aligned with who we are and who we want to be and could even possibly be a, a better direction for us. And we can only find that path or direction by being challenged or being pushed out of something. So this box is about changing our perspective or um, being aware of um, looking at things differently and hoping that over time we can see how that challenging aspect has maybe impacted our life in a better way. And this isn't true for every situation, um, but in some situations, I think it is true. And while we're going through it, it doesn't feel like it's gonna lead to something better, but we just gotta stick with it and hopefully it will. That's okay? great. Isn't that a great quote? I'm not sure where you stopped reading the quote, because <laughs> now I'm gonna quote that. That entire thing is a quote, actually. <laughs> just put Sarah Cray and then Michael Scott. No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to be doing our gradient wash. Our second step is we will be putting in our sun rays. Our third step is we will be doing the first layer of our undersea floor. Our fourth step is we will be doing this like foreground layer and then any details, any finishing things. The other thing that I really love about this project is usually projects can only be um, horizontal or vertical, but this one can be totally turned vertically and still be a beautiful project. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you guys can paint this any way that you want. Also, um, you have a lot of space here opportunity-wise. So if you wanted to do like silhouettes, like sea turtle silhouettes. Mermaids. A mermaid silhouette, an octopus silhouette. Like, I really was going back and forth. Dolphins. Yes. I was going back and forth if I should put anything there. And then I thought like, I just want to give you guys a scene, an opportunity to make this your own. You can even leave it as is and just kind of like give yourself the freedom to adjust the orientation and also the details of what's going on in this painting. Okay? Cool. Cool. So I am using three colors for this project. Just three. We are doing Payne's Gray. We are doing Berry Blue. And we are doing azure blue. And um, we're using four paintbrushes for this project. That's mostly because we're painting on a large surface, the whole page. Um, so I wanted to use some larger brushes so we can work that area faster. We've got a one inch wash around 12, around six and around two. Um, these are kind of, our, our round two and round six are our standard go-to brushes. The round 12 and one inch wash are slowly becoming added to that go-to brush set. Um, but really just use whatever you have. Use a sponge. You can totally paint this with a sponge. Use whatever you want. Use your finger. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it a separate YouTube channel where it's just me and a sponge. Yes. Painting your projects. That would be amazing. It's so funny, actually, because you just <laughs> said sponge so nonchalant, but like sponge. You can paint with a sponge. <laughs> That'd you be could. amazing. <laughs> okay, I am using Holbein Soft Tape as my tape, and I'm using the Let's Make Art Watercolor Paper. And you want to paint on the more t textured side, the little bit rougher side is the side that you actually want to paint on. And I'm using my butcher tray palette here. You can see that the colors are still left from when I've previously painted and you can leave them just like this and just keep painting. Watercolors reconstitute. So this is most likely what your palettes look like instead of a nice clean one. Okay, let's do our oath and then let's get painting. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, 
I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I know that some of you are not this way, but I know that I am this way where I'm just, I'm competitive by nature. And I've done a lot of work to not like totally base my value off of like competing, but like it's hard, it's a struggle. It is. It is, and so like, for me personally, comparison is where I have found um, distracts me from the opportunity to find joy in what it is that I'm doing. And that's why I ask us not to compare. Now, the other side of it is some of you who are not competitive in nature will be like, I can't relate to this at all. And in that case, I ask you not to just compare with yourself. Maybe you're not interested in being the best in the room but maybe you're so hard and critical on yourself that you're so afraid of letting yourself down that you won't try or it, it limits you from exploring or trying new things. So in that way, try not to compare with who you are and the expectations that you set for yourself because that can also hurt us in a way where we're, we wouldn't be willing to put ourselves out there and find that joy. Okay? Okay. All right. So I'm gonna start with my one inch wash. And I already transferred my outline here. There's directions on how to do that within your welcome note if you've never transferred using graphite paper. And I am going to do a wash from dark to light with my one inch wash. And with my second step with removing the sun rays, I wanna work fairly quickly. So I'm gonna do one in the step one and step two really quick right after each other, okay? So I'm gonna take my wash and I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray and I'm gonna take some Berry Blue and I'm gonna take some Azure Blue and I wanna get like a dark color. Now I'm going to start on the dark side and work my way up. I'm gonna be adding water to lighten my value. The other thing I'm gonna be adding is just the pure color. You can adjust value by hue, which would, um, I'm sorry, you can adjust value by value alone. And what that means is you just take the same color and just add water to it, water to it to keep lightening it up. Or if you change it by hue, that means you introduce different colors within that transition to enrich that transition, okay? So I'm gonna start dark, nice and dark. Not black though, because we want, we don't want it to be darker than this kind of like medium ground here. You see what I'm saying? Cause it's gotta stick out. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start here. And I'm doing swoops. And at this point I need water. You see how my brush is getting a texture? Okay. Add water, keep swooping. Now at this point, I'm gonna start over here and do another layer. Cause I kind of want to make that color transition longer. Okay, now at this point is where I'm gonna bring in a little bit of azure blue and berry blue. You see the saturation difference between yeah. those colors? This is what transition by hue means. Oh. I'm bringing in color, but the value still aligns, so it's a lighter value. Does oh, that make sense what that, I'm saying? That does make sense. It's trippy to figure out in my head. But when you start doing it, you're like, oh. Mm-hmm. Because values are like the thickness of the paint color. That's how I like to think. The about. lightness and darkness of a color itself yes. Yes. is the value. Yes. Thank you. Much you're better than thickness. No, it, <laughs> it's a different way to say it. Right. And sometimes we just have to like... You could be hearing this all day. Maybe this isn't even your first time seeing a value transition with hue, but maybe something that Keenan just said clicked. And then mm -hmm. it's easier for your brain to understand. We all learn differently. That's why I put in so much work to research these <laughs> lessons before I share them. Keenan, what would I do without you? I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I got my value transition and very quickly, I'm going to take my card because the, the angle of the rays matter. So I'm gonna plant one side in this corner and I'm gonna do a line, a line, a line. And this is a guide, a line, okay? Then I'm gonna take my brush, make sure it's clean. And I'm gonna lift out color. 
But you see why you have to work quickly? Because the longer this dries, the harder it is to lift out color. So I'm following the guide of my paper angles. So I know that my angles on my sun rays are not messed up. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Can you see that lifting? I do have a little bit of a texture on my paper. I have, I'm not sure why. Do you see that appearing? A little bit, yeah. I'm not gonna worry about it though. Maybe those are the bubbles from Aquaman. Obviously. So I'm gonna try and make this a little bit longer, the rays. Cause they'll go into kind of more that medium value which means when they lift up, they'll be a little bit easier to see in a like medium value compared to a light value. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Let's try paper towel too. Let's see what this does. Okay, there we go, that feels good. And you can do like little rays in between the big rays Maybe you just want it to be like that smooth transition and there's no rays. That's an option too. That looks cool. Now the darker you go down, like the darker your background washes, um, the more these rays will appear. So if you were to do this project again and you're like, I really like this, but my rays weren't sticking out as much as I wanted them to, try doing it again with the darker wash behind it. That feels pretty good though. Ah, maybe I'll go a little bit more. I keep just making these rays go. That looks awesome. And you guys are the artists. You can decide if they're short, you can decide how long they are. Also, if you get the Waves of Change box, we have bleed proof white in there. And what that means is let's say you try this and you're just not getting as white as you want it to by lifting, you can always go in with bleed proof white and do white lines. I chose not to do that for this project because I really wanted um, just like lift the lifting portion to do the work but that's always an option I feel like I need one maybe coming out here okay wow what is this texture do you see that it was pre-salted do you know <laughs> got a salty sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it kind of reminds me of though? Is it kind of reminds me of, um, how do I say this? You know like the unevenness of waves mm -hmm. and how when the light shines through the uneven unevenness of waves, it creates a like texture like this on the bottom of the ocean floor. Totally. That's kind of what that's reminding me of. Okay. Which is kind of cool, Super I think. Super cool, no, I like that a lot. Okay, one other thing that I'm going to, well, I'm debating if I should do it, is I love the saturation that's happening here, and I don't love that it stops here. Do you see the saturation difference oh. between this section and this section? Yes. So I'm debating, should I do another wash to match this saturation level? The answer is yes. Yes. I'm going to do it. Affirmative. Okay, now let me just say, and I'm gonna call this out now. When it comes to watercolor, you have a chance of getting blooms or hard edges, depending on different water drying times and water amounts on your paper. What I mean by that is we did one layer, like in one, one swipe, we did this whole layer of wash. If I go in and do a layer of wash on half of it, there is a strong possibility that I will get a hard line because I'm introducing more water to, a, to one section of the paper. So I'll probably get a hard line in between. Does that make sense of what yes, I'm saying? Um, but that's a chance that I'm willing to take. Worth it. Because. Who doesn't love hard lines? Boundaries are important, Sarah. Yes, 
they are important. Thank you. Okay. So basically I'm gonna go, I feel like the value is pretty good. So I'm not gonna worry too much about getting like dark paint. At this point, I'm just doing like a colored wash on top. Still using my one and I'm gonna be picking up basically just Azure and Berry. Oh, that feels better. Does that feel better? How did you do that? That's well, amazing. If you weren't on your phone, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. Wow. Okay, that saturation now feels better to me. Like the the saturation evenness. You see what I'm saying? I do. When I say that. I mean, I understood what you were saying before. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't but now even a I question. Can see it. I'm gonna do a little bit more, just a little bit. I like that the berry has a little bit of purple undertones. So I added that right there too. And I think feels the good. berry blue, I think I said this the other day, mm -hmm. berry blue might be one of my new favorite blue shades, period. It's a beautiful color. It's a great blue color. Yeah. I feel like my sun rays, I made them all the same length. I wish that I would have done some a little bit shorter, but it's not bad. You know no, what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. But it's okay. I am going to now let this dry before we do our first layer of undersea ground. Do, 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 Q, because then I could just harmonize that song at the same time. That would be really cool. But I cannot. Me neither. I don't understand it. Me neither. I know one goes high and one goes low. There's a melody and a harmony. Can't create the harmony. I I just, I don't know how someone can hear someone singing at this level mm -hmm. and be able to do this level. Because when I hear someone sing at this level, Can't. I want to sing at that same level. Same. I automatically go high. Yeah. Like Maroon 5, Adam Levine. I've always wanted to sound like him. He is a very talented singer. Can't sound like him. <laughs> Can't do it. Can't. Okay, so now, now our layer is totally dry and we can move on to step three, which is doing the first layer of our undersea floor. So I'm going to mix a medium value. So I'm gonna take some of this dark value that I already have and I want to kind of like, let's see what my reference photo here. That one's definitely like not gray totally. So I'm gonna put in some color here. Let me move this closer. So here's my pink gray that I pulled. Here's my berry blue. Here's my azure blue. Pulled that all together. And now my outline was not super dark, which means like I can kind of see some of it and some of it I can't really see. And whenever that happens, don't stress out too much. Know that you can just eyeball it, okay? And make it your own. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna use my round 12 because it's a bigger brush and I'm gonna be filling up a larger space. And we're gonna start here. And maybe we'll go here and maybe up here. Nice. So maybe you're following the outline, maybe you're not. Honestly, this is one of those projects where undersea floor can be so many things. There could be sea critters, there could be little, I am gonna do a little bit of a bumpy, like sea rocks a little bit, you know? Mm. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge I ran out of paint, so I'm gonna mix more paint. Now, this is a common um, situation when you're painting where some people will mix a color and then run out of that paint. And there's two ways that you can approach this. You can just say, okay, I'll just mix more, and if it's slightly different, that's not a huge deal, and I'm gonna let it go. Or you just make sure that you have you mix enough paint when you first start, so then you don't run out. I mean, we give you guys plenty of paint, so if that's how you need to be, 
um, to paint this and not stress, do it that way. For me, I'm a mix as you go, not really gonna stress if it's slightly different kind of painter. You get to choose who you are. And there's no right or wrong. Honestly, I, I, don't, believe, I don't believe you're more of an artist if you have it all ready or more of an artist if you can just mix as you go. It, it's truly just different styles. Okay, now I'm gonna do my um, like little seaweed coming out. They're I definitely like, try to have my supplies always ready. Yeah. But that's just like for fear of not having what I need in case I've got to really work fast. Mm, yeah, I can see that. You know? Yeah. This looks super cool. It looks rounded. Looks rounded? Yeah. Like this looks like one side of an opening rather than it ends right above. Like it looks like a... Oh, like a cave? A, in a cave almost. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's sweet. But don't worry. Sarah's going to see that I loved it and change it. <laughs> what if I just like rip it in half right now? Oh, I love this. <laughs> oh, you like that? <laughs> 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 I make art for me. <laughs> That's how you know you're an artist. <laughs> you do it for you. Uh, okay, I lost some shapes here, but I'm just going to not stress. That could be a, um, an artifact. Yep, who knows what this is. That's actually kind of funny. I totally lost my shape here. Okay, I need to focus more when I paint another one of these, and I will. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to do this guy kind of coming out on this opening. And you can use your six for this if it's easier for you to get a little bit thinner lines. And if you want to do like coral, I'm going to move to my two. And again, I'm just taking that same paint color that I already mixed and just keep pulling from that. And I can tell that since I freehanded this, it's different than the outline and that's okay. I'm just trying to figure out my spacing. So you can see that I moved this guy much closer, like it's more here. So maybe I'll move my coral over here mm. and kind of switch places with that. And corals actually kind of remind me of like this one at least because there's different types, like trees, like little itty bitty trees. That makes sense. Is that helpful for you? Yeah, but it might not be helpful for you. I won't take offense to that. I meant the, colloqu the colloquial you. Everybody's oh, oh, watching. I see, I see. Not you, Keenan. Sorry, got it. I'm loving the texture on the, the left side. Here? Yeah, that yeah. blowing my mind. Well, the sad thing is we're actually going to cover a lot of that up. I know. <laughs> But you guys get to decide how much of that, if there's a particular section that you're just like, like, like let's say this right here, that you really love that and you don't want to cover up, you can do this like really dark foreground area and adjust it so it works its way around the areas that you want to keep being seen. Um, but I actually really love this like outcropping of the rock right here. So I will be covering up that section, Keenan, and I'm sorry. That's great, no. And then you're gonna to want to dry. Make sure this is totally dry before you do the next section. This is one of those paintings that's made the paper larger. Oh, really? Yeah, like it made it look like, like it's bigger. Yeah. Some serious optical illusions going on right now. It's throwing me off. I think that's what I love about like painting. So much of it is optical illusions because you're trying to make a two-dimensional surface seem three-dimensional. True, And okay. I find that fascinating. It is. Okay. Paper is dry. And now I'm gonna use like 
mostly Payne's Gray. This is like, and you can mix some blue in there too if you wanna give it a hint of color, but this is gonna be your darkest value on your painting. Now, I need to decide where I want this to go since I'm kinda of going off on my own here because my outline didn't show through my first wash. Um, so, there's a couple ways that you can do it. If you wanted to try and like sketch where you want it to go, and I know it sounds so silly, but I love like if your painting is dry to use your hands to kind of visualize, okay, there's gonna be an outcropping here. That feels good. I want it to go back in. I like that coral. I want that to be seen. This, I'm kind of okay if it gets kind of covered up because this got a little bit wonky. So maybe I'll put that here okay. and go back down. Okay, so now in my mind, I kind of have a plan and I'm just gonna go for it. So let's do this and then go back out. And I like that coral, so we're gonna keep it. This is gonna go up. I'm gonna cover some of that. And it's gonna fade off like that. Okay? And I love the ins and outs of it. You know what I mean? Like. The flow between the two? Yes. Yeah. Showing different sections. It's almost like playing peekaboo. Like which areas do we wanna show? Which ones do we wanna hide? Add some water to this, just so it can like move a little bit easier on your brush. And we're just gonna fill it in using a, a round 12. If you're painting on a smaller, like if you're doing a half sheet painting, which you totally can, um, and if you're intimidated a little bit to start water and coloring, I would suggest, because a smaller sheet of paper is not as scary as a nine by 12. And uh, you wouldn't need necessarily need a round 12. You could use like a round six for this part. That is a dark color. Yeah. And maybe some of this is kind of like, I'm using the tip here to kind of create smaller like textures as if it's kind of bumpy, like it's rock. Cool. Now I'm gonna kind of like, just kind of like go along the edge. And I like to use sometimes like more straight combined with the little detailed curves. I think it kind of lends itself to kind of that feeling of rock a little bit more than a soft wave. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I feel like this actually needs to continue here. I just feel like this compared to that is pretty extreme. Hmm. So I'm just gonna, but this is your painting. So like anything I'm doing, you, can, you have every right and I will not be offended for you to say, I don't actually like that. So I'm gonna do it this way. I kind of love it when people do that actually. Cause then I'm like, good, make it your own painting. Do it. Do it. <laughs> this is yours. You know what I mean? Like. And I feel like that shows how you're growing as an artist and as a creative, where you're starting to trust that voice inside yourself a little bit more. Because sometimes, sometimes that's the hardest part, not learning the techniques, not actually doing it. It's trusting yourself and your inner artist enough to make decisions and be okay with them. That I think is the hardest part more than anything. Okay, now I'm gonna take my six and use that same dark value and um, create little, my seaweed, my little coral reef, like whatever you want this to look like. And what if we do, I'm gonna do the little tube things over here. A 
okay, that feels better nice. <laughs> than that, that little guy there. And so in this area, I have this seaweed guy and I have another seaweed guy. And for me, I want to be aware of the direction. Do I want it to be going this way? Do I want it to be going down? Like, is it gonna be distracting that there's two right next to each other? I think I'm gonna have it kind of angled in. Like if you look at the angle of this one, it's angled this way. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I do another one angled this way, that's gonna create a strong direction in my painting. Mm. And that could be used intentionally or not intentionally. So what I'm going to do, because I'm like, I don't know if I want such strong down direction like that, I'm gonna have mine be angled this way, okay? So I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this, and then I got my rays. Cool. Okay? So let's just go for it. And the biggest thing to remember as you're creating this, as you're making these decisions, as you're learning to trust yourself as a creative and as an artist, the worst thing that can happen is you gotta throw it away and start again. That's it. That's not bad. And that's not too bad. Sometimes it's like the worst thing in the world <laughs> because if you really like a painting, it's like hard to let it go. Or, but, but it's more you have to understand that your ability is not limited to one. And I think that that's the underlying fear of like, I really like this painting and if I mess up, I don't think I'll ever create something like this again. And that is a scarcity mindset and creativity can't thrive when the underlying, when there's so much fear, when there's this feeling of, I will never be able to do this again. I will never be able to create again. Um, we need to just totally eliminate or I don't want to say eliminate like it's totally possible. I mean, maybe ignore. I mean, maybe have mantras or maybe recognize that this is not your one chance and this is not your one best painting and this is not the only time that you're going to create something that you're proud of. That opportunity is always there. So it's scary messing up something that you love, but just know that you'll love again. You just have to keep creating in order to do so. Okay, what do we think? What's missing? Is anything missing? Aquaman. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, like a scuba diver. Scuba yeah. diver would be really cool That'd be here. Sweet. I don't know why you're avoiding Aquaman. Listen, I don't know a lot about Aquaman. Oh, no. I know. He has a trident. He can speak. He to does. The fishes. Yeah. All right, do Aquaman. Yeah, do Aquaman. Tri Tridents are really cool. They are cool. And I kind of love, I'm just doing some like horizontal rough textures on this rock. It just feels like it needs it. It's not in the reference photo, but I'm going off script here. And I just like, don't you like what that did? I, I didn't do. Even... I feel like that added dimension to something that was originally flat. I agree. Cool. Well, there we go. I feel good about it. Wow. I know. That's it. You know what I love about it? What? Aside from the fact that the midground, I think we're going to call it that today, is rounded and looks like it's the opening of a cave, mm -hmm. I actually love how open it is. Yeah. Like without anything there, yeah. it feels good. Yeah. Should we like maybe turn it? I'm gonna leave it taped. And let's turn it on its side to see okay. how it looks from the yeah, side perspective. Yeah, let's expose the entire table. Listen, you're gonna see the real, what's underneath this mat, but I think you guys can handle it. Yeah, you can, you might love it. <laughs> wow. That's cool. See, that's awesome. Yeah, that just changed that the whole painting. But it could totally, okay, now look away from it. Okay, and look back as if it's always was painted that way. Like doing a long mermaid right here. Cool. Cool, right? Yep. And then if you were to do it this way, I almost feel like you could do a school of fish. Oh, that, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so anyways, 
I hope that you guys had fun painting this. I hope that you take this and run with it and play with it and make it yours. I hope that you, by seeing me make different decisions from what I originally created in the reference photo, gives you permission to do the same thing. We do not have to make carbon copies of each other in order to learn something. And we're not interested in you guys being exactly the same. I'm interested in you guys feeling confident in expressing whatever it is that you want to express. And my hope is I, I can give you the tools to do that and tell you why I'm doing all the things of why I'm doing it. So you can say, I like that. I don't like that. So I'm going to do this. So go for it, have fun with it. If you're in our watercolor group, you can um, join that or share your work if you're already a part of it. I know it's so scary putting your artwork out there, especially if you're new and starting out, um, but that's because we've created a society where we feel like something can only be worth sharing if it's seen as perfect. And I actually think that's really harmful. So share the mess ups, share the things that um, dismantle the belief that people are born with this, that it's easy, that it's you have it or you don't. It's just not true. And we can dismantle that and be better for our future selves by sharing every step of the way and just being like, this is where I'm at right now. We'll see where I'm at in a week or a month or a year or five years. Um, if you are on Instagram, you can join um, our, you can share your work by tagging us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art or hashtag let's make art watercolor <laughs> and if you need any of these supplies you can find them at let's make art.com keenan thanks for being here thanks sarah you do a lot yeah, well, <laughs> bell can't ring itself <laughs> and i'll see you guys next week bye